Hey friends, it's the 21st of December and as such it is the 21st day of the advent of compiler optimizations. We're going to be continuing on the theme of the kinds of SIMD and vectorization optimizations the compiler can pull. Let's have a look in Compiler Explorer. So continuing on from yesterday, I've got the optimizer set to 03 and I've set my architecture to Skylake. And I'm going to look at some integer based uh, routines today. So I'm going to say, uh, yep, it's going to be another sum routine. I know I keep using it over and over again, but we're going to take span and we're going to say something like int sum stood span of int span for, yeah, you guessed it, lm in span uh, total plus equals lm uh, int total. Splat, splat, return total. Okay, what does this look like? Lots of code. And because the compiler doesn't know how big this span is, there's a bit of code at the beginning of the routine that says, how big is it? Maybe if it's big enough, we can use vectorized oper uh, operations. And that's in fact what's happening. We can already see there's some VP looking things lower down here. So we're, we're not gonna look at that. I'm gonna make life easy for us all here. And what I'm gonna say is that this is a 65536 long span. That is to say the compiler knows at compile time how big this span is because I'm not gonna worry about that other bit. And already we can see the code is reduced dramatically in size. So uh, just a quick read of it, we can say we get the pointer to the end of the array, we parallel ZOR XMM0 with itself, which is to say sets it to zero. Um, VP add, duh, 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 duh. Um, probably too many does in there. VP add, so this is a vector parallel add of um, double words. So this is D words, which is to say 32 bit value. So integers in R. they, this is not a floating point add. This is a, uh, an integer add. And so it's adding to YMM zero, which is the same register as XMM zero. It's a bit like racks and EAX. You can refer to the various sizes of registers by the, the, the name of the smallest element that uses it. And it, here it's assuming the top part of YMM is zero. That's that V zero upper thing you saw earlier on uh, did. So anyway, we're zoring XMM0 with itself, and then that effectively sets YMM0 to zero, and then we're adding in parallel. Now, that is not quite what we wrote. We said to take a single total and add each element in turn to it. Here, the compiler is picking up, what is it, a YMM pointer's worth of integers, which is to say eight integers, it's picking them up, and it's adding them element-wise to XMM0, which is its total. Now, that means that we're now going to have eight subtotals, one for every eighth element in the array. Then we move 32 bytes forward, eight integers. Are we at the end? If not, go round. So we've looped over, and now we have eight separate subtotals, one for every eighth element. Hopefully that makes sense. I've probably, I'll try and put some clever diagram on the screen here, but now I've just made myself have to do that. Ha ha ha. Anyway, having come out of this, we've got YMM0, and then we need to get a single total out of it. And these various extracts and adds and, and shifts and adds and shifts and adds are effectively taking the eight wide subtotals and then adding them onto themselves, taking the top four and adding them to the bottom four, then doing the top two of the four, bottom four, and adding them, and then adding the last one to itself. That's what all these instructions are doing. So we're kind of folding itself down and hierarchically uh, combining it by sort of horizontal adding, as it's called, where you're adding not, um, it, not vertically between elements, but across the elements until we end up with one overall final total. That's then moved into EAX, and we've got our results, and then there's our V0 upper that clears all the top bits of the Y registers. Great, fantastic. Um, it's meant that we have spent most of the loop body doing very little, and then we have to do this little bit of extra cleanup work at the end, but it's, all is great. Let's see what happens if we start passing floating point values instead of integers. So I'm gonna change this to be, uh, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do float, 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 and hmm, well that's interesting. The compiler has decided not to vectorize 
in this instance. In fact, it is not even doing this sort of parallel shifty add thing that I was expecting it to do inside the loop. It has decided to just do them one at a time. Now, you might see this add and go, ah, it's doing 32 of them at a time. And it kind of is doing 32 bytes worth at a time, but it's doing them one at a time by just adding them one after another. So it's kind of unrolled the loop that it would otherwise like to do vectorized um, and it's unrolled them in a line of instructions. So why has it done this? Why can't it pull the same trick that it did in the integer mode? We would have thought that the vector units in modern CPUs were as good with floats as they are with integers. And in fact, they are. If, if anything, they're better with floats than they are with integers. The thing that's thwarting us here is the floating point rules about addition. So the compiler is hamstrung because it has to adhere to the rules about floating point maths. Floating point, unlike integer maths, is not associative. That means that adding x plus y plus z is not the same as adding z plus y plus x or any other combination of those three adds. x plus y and y plus x gives you the same answer, but x plus y parens plus z is different from x plus parens y plus z. So the order that you add things matters. And so the compiler has to add them in the order that I asked it to add them, which is to say one at a time from left to right. I said, hey, look, there are 65,000 floating point variables here. Add them from left to right. And I can't tell the compiler that it's okay to add them in a different order. And by picking them up eight at a time, like it was with the integer version, it would be breaking that. It would be having eight subtotals that were added up, one every eight, and then summed again at the end. Some of you might be screaming, ah, just use uh, dash F unsafe math optimizations, which is my favorite uh, flag to add. It's the fun safe math optimizations, which is like neither fun nor safe, um, or dash O fast, which is the same. But both of those essentially give the compiler carte blanche to do almost anything to get more and more approximate answers to floating point numbers, and you get essentially unbounded precision loss. There is a better way of doing this. Um, I'm just going to show you a non-standard way for turning on a flag just for a single function where we're going to say to it, hey, actually, this is OK. This is fine. So I'm going to say up here, GNU, uh, optimize, and I have to spell it the American way. And here I'm going to say associative math, singular math. And now we've given permission for this function and this function alone for the compiler to assume that floating point maths is in fact associative, even though it isn't. We will get different answers on different architectures and you'll get different answers on different width processors if you compile this for different processors. So you have to be aware of that. So you'd be careful with tests and that kind of thing. And obviously if numerical precision is important to you, don't do this at all. But we can see that by putting this flag on for this function, we're now back to something which looks a lot more like that integer version. We can see that what we're doing is adding in parallel the floating point values and then doing the equivalent floating point that we were doing with the integer to sum the subtotals at the end. So turning off associative math for a function is something you might consider doing, but be very, very careful with these things because there's just some surprising um, side effects that you can have if you're not very careful and thoughtful about this. But the performance benefits can be huge. The compiler is pretty good at vectorizing code, but you need to be aware of the limitations. Firstly, you know that the compiler is going to probably insert a check to make sure that if there are multiple arrays being acted upon that they don't overlap, and that might be an expensive check if you're not careful. Um, you're also going to check the size of the uh, data that's being acted upon, and if the compiler can't prove at compile time that it's going to be at least big enough to be worth vectorizing, then there'll be more checks around that before it jumps to either the regular slow version or a vectorized version. And then finally, things like floating point arithmetic rules might hamstring the compiler and prevent it from being able to generate the kind of instructions you might instinctively think. So you have to be a little careful and think a little bit about what you're asking the compiler to do and whether it's realistic for it to be able to achieve vectorization under the circumstances you put it under. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow for day 22.